Um, allow me to proceed uh, my brief presentation according to uh, the outline uh, shown on the screen. To start with, uh, this is just really a brief uh, discussion on uh, where we are with respect to fossil oil, uh, fossil uh, utilization. Uh, this is demand sector, and what we're see showing you here is that uh, um, we're very much dependent still on uh, fossil fuels. Uh, the transport sector is still heavily 100% dependent on oil, while we're starting to see actually our industries, uh, cement, iron and steel, and even the paper industry, starting to make use also of coal. Um, we're happy to be having also uh, the industry uh, starting to make use of natural gas, but uh, still on a very introductory uh, phase, uh, accounting only for 0.1% uh, of total fuel oil consumption. Or, or natural gas consumption. Our power generation sector is also one that is heavily dependent on fossil fuel. Power uh, generation is still at 78%. Just, yes. uh, can, can I ask to say next, next? Yes. Still uh, at the head page of your slide. Oh, my, you're saying my slide is not moving? Yeah, not moving. Uh, but you, you say next. So Next. that uh, we control the uh, slide. Ah, okay, okay. Now I am on the page on capacity generation and mix. Okay. So our major point here is that uh, our power generation is still at 78%, despite the move to be able to make uh, full use of our renewable energy and mm. other technologies. Capacity, installed capacity is still at 71 uh, fossil fuels. Next slide. Next slide is actually the 2040 uh, ah, expected situation. Next, next, next. Yeah, next slide, yes. Uh, 2040 uh, power generation situation. Even in the business case, we continue to expect uh, 73 or almost 74% of our generation of uh, power to be generated from uh, fossil fuels. Coal dominates to be fall, being followed by natural gas and oil uh, as it is being used now for uh, remote areas. But under the clean energy scenario of the Philippine Energy Plan, yes. uh, we're actually able to reduce the share of fossil fuels to about 60%. Uh, percent. Coal share is reduced to 33%, while natural gas uh, share is increased to about 27%. Uh, oil is still a very small 0.3% and the balance uh, is to be accounted for by uh, the renewable energy resources. Okay, next slide. Next slide is just a quick uh, comparison and actually the left side of the screen the, where you see the primary energy supply is what we would like to focus on this page. Uh, under this uh, information set comparing our reference and uh, even clean energy scenario by 2040 will still be about 68% or all, close to 69% uh, on coal. So pretty much uh, still in line with the uh, observation indicated earlier, uh, even by IEA. So um, there is a strong push for us to be able to make use of the different fuels and technologies, but uh, it looks like uh, despite all the efforts, we will still uh, be heavily dependent on uh, the different set of uh, fossil fuels and therefore there will still be a lot of CO2 emission. Okay, next slide please. The main purpose of uh, the Philippine Energy Plan is actually to be able to meet all the energy requirements of the country's yes. growing economy. And for us to be able to make use of this to include the uh, hitting the objective of self-sufficiency, we will need to make to develop our local natural reserves or natural resources. And this will still include coal, oil, and natural gas. Nevertheless, uh, we will still be, we're now actually seeing a minimum of 20,000 gig megawatt equivalent of renewable energy resources to come uh, uh, on stream uh, uh, between now and 2040. In order to meet the growing demand for power, about 75,000 megawatt of generating capacity will need to be in place. Currently, we're looking at 40, uh, about 40,000 
megawatt of renewable energy to be providing for this additional capacity requirement. And therefore, 35,000 megawatt of capacity will still be coming from um, the fossil fuels. Um, note that uh, all of this is being uh, uh, developed, being implemented now to include, with the, to include the necessary infrastructure. We're looking at having 13 uh, million ton per annum of LNG terminal capacity. We're actually uh, still looking at having as an oil storage capacity and being able to establish our strategic petroleum reserves. So therefore, there's still going to be a long dependency on uh, fossil fuels for uh, the Philippines. To be able to meet all this uh, target for the amount of energy to be required by the growing economy, a number of policies have been in place to be able to address the low carbon future target of the country. In the power sector, we have, the, we have issued the policy uh, providing for a moratorium on greenfield coal-fired power plants. This, of course, based on the information that we, we now have enough of the coal-fired power plant to be able to provide for the base load requirement of the country. However, all of the power plants will also need to be able to undertake performance audit, meaning they will need to have a minimum performance uh, in terms of energy use to be able to, well, uh, allow to continue operating as power plants. Power plants or the whole of the energy sec power sector are being asked to make full use of the smart grid technology. And at the same time, we are uh, uh, programmed to be able to fully expand the use of natural gas. Uh, additional capacity for power generation will be in place, but natural gas with availability of the in appropriate infrastructure will be utilized also in industry, in commercial, and hopefully even in residential and transport sector. To be able to reduce on the use of energy and reduce on CO2 emission, uh, we're actually programming to have energy efficiency and conservation as a way of life for Filipinos. Government agencies are set to, uh, to provide the example in saving on electricity and uh, the use of fuels. Uh, we're also launching uh, the appliance energy labeling and providing for a mandatory set of standards for energy equipment and other consuming devices. Our renewable energy resources will be strongly uh, developed and uh, we will be issuing actually the second version of our national renewable energy plan. And this plan will provide for all the options, for all the policy options you're seeing on screen to be able to encourage uh, not only the investors, but also the different users of uh, renewable energy. We're actually also opening the geothermal development to full foreign participation. For us to be able to move away from fossil fuels, to be able to reduce on emission, and also to be able to improve on efficiency, we're actually looking at the different alternative fuels and technology. Ocean and wave are being looked at. Offshore wind uh, is starting to be fully evaluated. We're looking at being able to have at least 50% of the uh, vehicles uh, converted or replaced by electro uh, e vehicles by 2040. We're now into nuclear power generation. Uh, well, at least uh, studying uh, how best we can have a nuclear power plant. Uh, we're not looking at the uh, big capacity nuclear plant. The Philippines being an archipelago and dealing with different islands. Uh, at this stage, uh, is evaluated as best suited to be taking uh, or making full use of the small medium reactors. Uh, consistent with the earlier discussion, we're also looking at hydrogen as a power, a possible fuel for power generation and even transport. All other uh, technologies that uh, may be able to replace our uh, dependency on fossil fuels are being explored and we hope we will have enough of the access to these uh, technologies. Next slide, please. You see that on the previous screen where we talk about the policies, carbon capture, utilization, and storage was not mentioned. 
CCUS is not yet identified in the Philippines as a program or strategy to be able to reduce emission. And this is actually one thing we would like to be able to address soon as uh, in partnership with the forum. We also don't have yet the laws, the regulations and the standard to make full utilization of carbon capture uh, utilization and storage technology. We also would like to be able to make sure there, that when we launch the use of CCUS, there will be enough of the public acceptability uh, to be able to have everyone accept it and also uh, assist in the full development and utilization <coughs> of the technology. On the CCUS itself, there are several questions we believe will need to be addressed in the Philippines for us to be able to have that uh, directions uh, fully in place. How viable is CCUS with respect to Philippines? We know that there are now existing uh, uh, facilities in other countries. We're happy to be hearing uh, three sites uh, being developed in, in Indonesia. But in the case of the Philippines, is our fossil fuel level of utilization and CO2 emission Will, is it now at the level that will help, will be viable for us to have CCUS facilities fully in place? Plus, we need to be able to fully understand the required infrastructure uh, for us to have that CCUS fully in place. As we mentioned, I mentioned earlier, the Philippines is an archipelago. Uh, in the big island of Luzon, we already have the power plants and other energy related issue, uh, facilities fully distributed. Uh, in different parts of the country. Uh, and then we have the island provinces of Visayas and then Mindanao in the south. How exactly can we full, make full benefit uh, from CCUS when there is this big issue of being able to have an integrated set of infrastructure to be able to collect, transport, and store CO2? And of course, the other issue mm -hmm. is safety. Is there enough of the standards, enough of the requirements for us to make sure or for us to be able to accept that CCUS facilities can be run and oper can be operated and run safely without posing any danger to the environment and more importantly to uh, the population. And therefore, we have this last slide for uh, presenting some of the challenges and maybe also a direction for the forum uh, to undertake. First, although the, I think some of them were mentioned earlier by Mr. Kimura, there is a need for, uh, I think, the uh, understanding more about the CCUS. And therefore, we'd like to be able to have the knowledge and experience sharing from those who already have the technology fully in place and operating. We need to be able to understand the different components, the structure, where exactly can we locate we need to be able to see, to understand how we would be evaluating the performance of our to-be-in-place system versus the, uh, the existing systems in other countries. Are we able to be at par with them and to make sure that there is really enough of the safety, enough of the economy, enough of the scale uh, in operating the CCUS? And then we need the laws to be in place. Uh, policies will need to be refined regulations uh, for the different implementers will need to be fully in place also. And then what is the best business model for us to take on? Uh, we hope to hear from those who already have the CCUS in place, uh, from the different organizations that presented earlier, and maybe even the forum can be the venue for us to be able to, sh to be sharing on these sets of uh, laws, policies, regulations, and even the business model. We believe we will need technology transfer, and this technology transfer can be facilitated if we're able to undertake some feasibility studies, if uh, we're also able to understand how exactly can we make uh, best identification and selection of sites for storage of CO2. And then for us to have that CCUS actually fully operating, acceptable, so forth and so on, we believe we need to show them also, to show everyone that there is enough of investment opportunities in putting up the carbon capture and utilization systems, uh, infrastructure, value chain, and even the network, as we call it. And then if investment is to come, if investment uh, is to happen, we need to be able to identify also 
who are providing for financing in implementing uh, this uh, CCUS project. So there's much that uh, the Philippines needs uh, from the network, uh, from all those who have already been implementing. And again, this is actually the basis for us in saying we're happy to be part of the network and we're happy to be uh, hearing all this information even in this uh, uh, launch of the forum. And we hope to be able to hear more and learn <clears throat> from the succeeding uh, sessions and even uh, meetings and interactions with the members of the network. Uh, this much uh, for the Philippines, uh, Mr. Kimura and uh, other participants. Thank you very much.